Winter sowing is a method of germinating seeds. You can use some sort of container, a milk jug for example, to make many greenhouses and put them outside in the winter. The seeds will germinate when the right conditions are met for that seed. You do almost nothing to make this happen. It is a very hands-off technique. Germination rates are excellent, and you end up with strong seedlings with well-developed root systems. You can use this technique for germinating almost all seeds, vegetables, perennials, annual flowers, and most North American native plants. I use it particularly for cold stratifying North American native plants. I am not an expert in winter sowing. I have linked to a lovely video in the description below that has every bit of information you need and is thorough and detailed. In the following video, Winter Sowing Part 2, we will go over planting the seeds and putting them outside. In a previous video, Winter Sowing Part 1, I went over preparing containers and soil. These videos cover the basics. If you like deeper information or if you have questions after watching, please refer to the video I've linked in the description. Enjoy and welcome to Winter Sowing. I have my soil mixed. I have my containers ready. And I'm gonna start with these seeds. This is a cold stratification 120 days. So since this needs the longest amount of time, that's about four months. I'm gonna make sure to get it out as soon as I can. This is, um, we are two or three days past the solstice here where I am. Here's the other one that I'm going to do. This is also a C120, so that means cold stratification, 120 days. So I'm going to make sure to get those two uh, out first. So this has about 30 seeds. I'm going to put, since they're pretty big, I'm going to, uh, I may decide to do 10 in each container. I might do 15 and just do two containers, I don't know. Uh, and these have 150 seeds, there's a lot of seeds in there. Uh, I won't do them all, um, but I will probably seed these heavy in the containers. So, I've got these from last year, they're already numbered. This is number one. So last year I did not, I filled them up about halfway with soil. Uh, which is about three and a half inches, three inches, three and a half inches. Uh, and I got a good bit of um, shrinkage uh, as it all sort of settled over the course of the year. So you can see there wasn't a whole lot of soil in there for the roots. And because these aren't um, clear, uh, because these are opaque, uh, they didn't get a lot of sun uh, down here in the bottom. So uh, I'm going to fill them up. I'm probably gonna fill them all the way up to this line here. That'll be a good four and a half or five inches. And then it'll shrink some, I anticipate. Um, I'm also gonna to try to pack it in as much as I can. You can tell I had uh, New York ironweed in here last year. Uh, I'm not gonna do that this year. I'm going to put in the blue flag virus. I'll just cross this out. I go by the numbers anyway. So since last year was my first year doing it, I wasn't really sure um, what was going to work out the best. So, all right. So I packed that in there pretty tight. It's still going to shrink. So I'm going to put a little bit more in. You do want these to have some headroom for your seedlings once they grow. So, okay. so I know this will shrink down and I really only need them to germinate in here. Uh, once they start to get tall or get their true leaves, you can see there's not a lot of headspace right now. And I do expect probably about an inch of shrink across the winter. Um, so they'll have some headspace. They don't need a whole lot because I'm going to transplant them 
as early as I can. Uh, last year, I waited too long to transplant them and then we had kind of a drought in the summer uh, and I'd rather not have that happen again. So you can see here on the top, there's some larger pieces. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do at the very top is put just some a dusting of just plain cocoa core, just right on the top. And these seeds are larger, so they do need to be planted down in. If these were smaller seeds going into here, I would um, spread the seeds out on top, give them a good press, and then leave them be. Uh, but because these are a little bit bigger, I need a dish. So here's my dish. I'm going to pour these seeds into. Big, huh? Okay, so here's my seeds. All right, I'm gonna do about 10 of these. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm gonna do three with about 10, and then they gave me some extras. So, put a couple of extras in. So there's my spread. Because these are fairly big seeds, I'm gonna push them in a bit. So wherever they landed, it's more or less evened out. Oh, I got that packed in pretty good, I think. having a really windy and rainy day today. It's supposed to drop in temperature pretty quickly later. Bombogenesis and all. Okay, so there's my first one done. It's got its uh, lid on it. And I'm going to set this, I'll show you. I'm gonna set this in a container of water set in a container of water. Let's get some water in there so it can absorb up from the bottom. Now when it rains, it's going to get water that drizzles in from the top. Just to kind of show you what that's like and that'll help keep it moist. Rain, snow, it'll help keep everything moist in there. Uh, but for now, it gets a little bit of water from the bottom. And I'll set this aside. I think I may just do one more of these and then leave some seeds over for another year. So, so. really matter that much. And I'll set it aside to absorb some water. So these I'm going to put back. Save them from it for another year. Another experiment. There we go. All right. Number three. So we'll do this spider wart. Okay. 
letter opener. Let's see what we've got. Fairly small seeds. And I get a bit of a cover since they're slightly bigger seeds. Some of those seeds are like microscopic. Obviously that's an exaggeration. Okay. Those are in. So that's Three. Be a little bit more delicate how I put these in there. If you can believe it, I couldn't find number four, so we've got uh, number five next. All right. Got my layer of my initial layer of plain cocoa cora, it'll be fine. Some seeds absolutely need light to germinate, uh, and they usually have that on the packaging information down here at the bottom. Uh, these don't, they don't need that, so I'm not really worried about covering them up. Some of the other seeds, I'll worry about that more and I'll make sure to put them only on the top and not put anything on top of it. But here we go. And I've got some seeds to put back for another time, another year, a different experiment. Oh, I'm actually sealed up nicely. Okay, I have probably a hundred more of these to do. I'm not going to film them all. Um, but if I come across something that I think that you should know as I do it, I will uh, stop and film that. Um, if I find one with really little tiny seeds, I'll make sure to film that one for you. So look forward to that. Here's my wedding process. I showed you one just over there on the potting table, but I take this tray and I fill it up with water and I'll let it absorb. Got room for about four more of these pots. Let's fill one of these so I can show you how to close it off and get it ready. I'm going to put some of these goldenrod seeds in it. Uh, if uh, I'm not mistaken, these are fairly small seeds, so you can also see what it looks like to put small seeds uh, on top of the soil and press them in. Oh, I did want to show you this. Look, see here. It says D. Sow seeds on soil surface. So we're gonna do that. The supplies that you'll need for this kind of container, you need obviously your seeds, your soil, your container, and some tape. Uh, duct tape is what most people use, uh, although some people talk about really liking painter's tape, that's what this is. Um, that's what we have, we have painter's tape, so that's what we're gonna use. Again, since there are some large pieces on top, I am going to add a layer of just plain cocoa core on top of this. Actually, press this down a little bit more. Here's my plain cocoa core. I'm just gonna add a layer right on top. Smooth it out. I'm not going to pack that down firmly. Time to open the seeds. We'll seed packet. 
I'm not going to use all of these seeds in this one bin. I'm gonna probably do about half uh, and then spread the others out into other containers. I'm just judging how much I have in my hand versus how much is in the bag. Do a little bit more. Okay, and I'll save that for some other containers. And then you just take it, take it and sprinkle it. So you can see the seeds on the soil and I'm just going to now press it down lightly. And that's really all you need to do. Freeze and thaw cycles will take care of the rest on its own. Okay, mostly I want to make sure that there's good soil contact with the seeds and then everything is more or less level. Okay, so now tape it closed. Take a small piece of tape just to hold it closed. I am going to pay a little attention to this top edge. Just to make sure that it's kind of adhered well. Not so worried about the bottom edge. Small piece of tape. taped back together. So now we need to mark this jug uh, and wet it. There's an infinite number of strategies in uh, how to mark, how to label uh, your jugs. Um, I particularly like to uh, not write what kind of seed is in here, uh, but give it a number. So since this is, um, we'll call this vinegar jug number one, so I'm gonna write a one on it, on the top. I'm also gonna do one on the bottom. So I'm using this uh, China marker, Sharpie China marker. This works great, it doesn't fade and you can rub it off with a little bit of oil. All right, so I've got my jug marked. Now I'm going to write down uh, what I'm putting in jug number one, I'm gonna write it down in my little notebook. Uh, but the last thing that I need to do before I set this outside is sit it in some water. Okay, here's the water. All right, I'm gonna sit and let this absorb. It's only been a minute or two and you can already see how much water it's taken up. So it's, uh, I filled it a pretty good bit, but you can see it's starting to take it up to here. So my soil level is here. So it's got to absorb all of that water. I'm going to add a little bit more to this. And then I'm going to set my timer for about 20 minutes and come back and check on it. It's a couple of hours later, and I hope that you can see that this has absorbed more moisture than before. Uh, I am going to leave it overnight just to make sure that the top layers are 
um, nice and damp. I'm gonna put it out in the morning. Uh, in the morning, I'll take when I take this outside, I'll show you all of the rest of the ones that I have out there. Um, a bit of a difference. Uh, you want to make sure these are good and wet before you take them outside. So leaving them to sit in water overnight and get very moist um, is something that's okay to do with these, uh, but I wouldn't do it if I was planting seedlings indoors um, because this is going to go outside and it's going to freeze, especially since the seeds are on the top. I want to make sure that that top layer uh, has gotten um, good and damp. Uh, and then the outdoor temperatures will freeze it and then I'll start helping the seeds crack open a little bit and get the moisture and the cold that they need to be able to germinate. But with seeds that I would start indoors, I wouldn't do that. I would put them in water like this and then 20 minutes later I would come back and whatever water it hasn't absorbed, uh, I would spill that out. So just a bit of a difference between putting these outside and doing seeds indoors on some of the containers that I winter sowed already. I've got these lined up and ready to go. These were still absorbing some water that was in there, um, but everything is frozen, yay! Everything is frozen. And that's fine, that's what they're supposed to do. All right, here's the bucket. So you saw it was frozen in the previous video, and in this video, I'll put it with the others it's snowing so you assume it's frozen but as long as your temperature overnight is below 55 degrees this is fine there we go they don't have to freeze necessarily they just have to be cold enough overnight we'll wait for the train So we had a couple of really warm days and you can see here that nothing is frozen anymore and that is fine, that's what you want. It was still definitely cold enough overnight. You can see some of the condensation on the inside or the underside of the lids. And that lets you know it's still got good moisture in it. Um, if it's got condensation on the inside, that lets you know. But it's also a good idea to pick them up and see if they weigh uh, a lot or a little. If there's not enough weight to it, you may that may mean that it needs more water. So give it a little bit more water. For the most part, they are going to be totally hands off. You might want to check on them every once in a while, but you don't need to do anything. And honestly, if you have um, winter uh, and it's not too dry uh, or, or too warm, you probably won't need to do anything at all until spring. Here you can see it's snowing again. Uh, and they're going to be frozen again, and the cycle continues. Now that you've watched part one and part two, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I will do my best to answer any questions. And like I said before, I am not an expert in this winter sewing technique, uh, but I have provided in the description a link to someone who is, uh, a video that they did that is very good, very detailed, uh, and will have any information you might need. Thanks for watching!